So because of that, one of the messages of the first vision will be to reiterate this idea of the covenant, not just baptism as a way of accepting Jesus, but of a covenant commitment to Christ through an ordinance like baptism. Joseph wrote that God told him, quote, all the churches have turned aside from the gospel. Now, let's define the gospel like the Book of Mormon does. Faith, repentance, baptism, reception of the Holy Ghost. Or in 1843, he was told they were all wrong and the everlasting covenant was broken. That's the Levi Richards account of the first vision. Or the 1838 account says that the professors of religion were all corrupt. By the way, that's my favorite line being a religion professor, by the way, that I need to make sure I stay humble. The professors of religion were all corrupt. They teach for doctrines the commandments of men, message number one. Now message number two. You ready? Stick with me on this. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. What does that have to do with ordinances? Well, you have to connect that line with a later revelation to Joseph Smith. Cross-reference that with Doctrine and Covenants section 84, verse 20 through 21. What does the Lord say there? He says, Joseph, in the ordinances, the power of godliness is manifest. And without the ordinances of the gospel, the power of godliness is not manifest. Now, connect that to the first vision. Joseph, they have a form of godliness. They teach about Jesus and, and, and his teachings, which is wonderful. But they deny the power of godliness, which comes through priesthood authorized ordinances and covenants. Wow, what a message to put together there on those two scriptures as a whole. Uh, therefore, in the ordinances, that was a signal from the very beginning that this restoration would be a restoration of ordinances, covenants, and priesthood to perform them. That's what sets us apart a little bit different. So what powers come to us from those ordinances? Let me just give you a few. Through baptism and the sacrament, you and I join ourselves with Jesus in a covenant relationship. He is us. We are him. His purity becomes our purity. His goodness, our goodness. His qualifications for heaven, ours. That's the beauty of a covenant. That's why we get married. We join uh, and become one. So we get the purity of God through baptism and the sacrament. Through the ordinance of the Holy Ghost, we get the mind and the heart of God. We get that spirit with us always to, to rebirth us and to change us, to become more like him. What, what power do we get through the endowment ordinance? Well, we get the power and capacity of great high priests. We get the knowledge of God and the power to come into his presence, the power to perform miracles and come unto him to receive his fullness. Well, what power do we get through uh, the ultimate ordinances of the temple, like sealing of a couple? Well, through that, we get the eternal increase of God, the ability to have an eternal family and to grow and become like God. The power is found in the covenants and ordinances, and that is rooting right from the first vision.